uh, this is Sister Hill. I'm in New York City, but I just wanted to talk a little bit. We'll share of why you should serve a mission and why I love being a missionary. Just to start off with a quote by our prophet. He says that the gathering of Israel is the most important thing taking place on the earth today. And nothing else compares in magnitude, importance, and majesty. And if you choose to, you can be a big part of it. Um, and I just, I love that. And I really, truly believe that this work is an important work. And so I just want to talk about, like, briefly three things of why why I've served a mission. Um, and the first thing that comes to mind is, is the scripture where, when it talks about where much is given, much is required. And I think that for me and for us, we were raised and we learned about the gospel and so there are people in the world who need to hear about that we're so blessed to be a part of his of jesus christ your church and so we have the duty to teach people because we've learned about that growing up um, and then another thing that that then reminds me of that like we're teaching people but something that i've learned very quickly on my mission is that he doesn't expect us to be perfect teachers or perfect at talking to people or perfect at being a missionary, whatever you may think a missionary is, uh, that this is God's work and he's chosen the weak and the simple to do it and I have come to see so far my mission so many different weaknesses that I have, but as I've learned to rely on the Lord, I've learned that anyone can serve a mission in any capacity that they are able to, but that it really, like he trusts us to do his work. It's not always about those outward miracles. I have not seen very many baptisms since being on my mission personally, but I, and that kind of was hard for me at the beginning, but I just realized that, um, that I've been able to see Christ's atonement work in my life and in the people that we teach, and I think that that is one of the greatest miracles of all. And so moral of the story, I am serving a mission because I have been so blessed and and God wants to share those blessings with others, and so I love being able to share that with others. But then, coming back to that, God continues to bless me from being on my mission and learning how to apply Christ's atonement in my life. Hello, I'm Elder Porter. I'm serving in the Utah Ore Mission, and I've been out for 16 months. And wanted to share something about what I've learned from my mission so far, and how you can also be able to better prepare to serve your own mission. And something that I've come to learn is that a mission is designed to be a springboard to become a true disciple of Jesus Christ. It's a way for you as a missionary to become committed to the Lord. And a quote from the Missionary Standards for Disciples of Jesus Christ, I think really nicely summarizes that. It says, when seen from an eternal perspective, your full-time mission experience is more than a checkbox to be marked off. It is a means to continue becoming a lifelong disciple of Christ. And that's important. The mission is so much more than just something you do because you were asked to, or someone wants you to, or your parents are forcing you. That's the gift that God's given us, agency to choose. It's important that we choose to do his work and do it his way. In Doctrine and Covenants chapter 11, verses 20 and 21, there's two verses I think wonderfully show this and... It says, Behold, this is your work, to keep my commandments, yea, with all your mind, mind and strength. Seek not to declare my word, but first seek to obtain my word, and then shall your tongue be loosed. Then if you desire, you shall have my spirit and my word, yea, the power of God unto the convincing of men. And so with this scripture, something I wish I would have learned before my mission is the importance of study, study of the scriptures. As it says there, there are a couple things that we have to do as a, a person or as a missionary, in order to have the Spirit with us to be able to do the job of a missionary, because the Spirit is so very important in missionary service. It'll lead and guide us and help us in all that we must do. And as a missionary, we have companion study for and personal study. Personal study is for an hour, and companion study is for 30 minutes. And at least once you get going in the mission after training. And that hour to study personally about the needs of the people you're teaching and everything like that is very important. And I've come to learn the scriptures a lot better because of that. And that's something I think would have benefited me a lot was to spend maybe even an hour or 30 minutes at the most or at the least and go from there studying the scriptures and really studying them, not just reading them because I had to, but because I love them and they're so very important. And I can, I can really see that difference in my life. And I think that's powerful.
the scriptures are powerful. And as it says, if you will seek to obtain my word, read the scriptures, then the Lord will loose your tongue. And then if you desire to have his spirit, because it's a choice, you will have his spirit and his word. And that together will be the power of God unto the convincing of men. And that's something that I think can bless your missionary service by striving to be diligent and obedient to become a true disciple of Christ by studying with all your heart, might, mind, and strength. Hello. Uh, I'm Elder Chandler, uh, Lance's brother, if you guys know Lance. And uh, I just wanted to say a few things about being prepared to serve a mission. There's a few things that I that I set aside here because they're the, the things that I use the most. I study the, the scriptures every day and I study preach my gospel every day. And I know that uh, before my mission, I didn't really study that much as I didn't know that much coming into the mission, but I wish that I would have. Uh, so that way I could have been better right, at, right, out, right out the gate. Uh, but in preaching my gospel, there's a lot of really useful tools. Uh, every chapter is dedicated to a, to a different thing. I would say chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 6, chapter 8, and chapter 12 are the chapters that I read the most in my mission. Uh, also, know the Bible pretty well, specifically here in Brazil, because there's a lot of people that like to Bible bash. Not to... Don't know the Bible just to... To fight with people, but so that way you know exactly what you're, you're you're getting into. A testimony is probably the most important thing. Have a testimony of the the Book of Mormon. Have read it on before your mission. I know that the Book of Mormon is true because I read it on before my mission, and it's helped me a lot in my mission. And I know that it will help me after my mission too. Uh, it really is true. Uh, I just wanted to read a scripture before before I go because I didn't want to make a long video, but. In chapter 42 of Alma, uh, it's when Alma's talking to his son, Corianton. And after he, he says a few words that were really important for his son to know, he, he gives him his calling again. He says, And now, O my son, you are called to God, of God to preach the word unto this people. And now, my son, go thy way. Declare the word with truth and soberness, that thou mayest bring souls unto repentance, that this great plan of mercy may have claim upon thee, and may grant God unto you, even according to my words, amen. amen. Uh, when we when we have our, our mission calls and we decide to, to go into the mission field, we're going to declare repentance to everyone. So when we when we're working hard and we're we're doing what we can to help people, we'll be able to see a lot of great results. I've already had the chance to have a few baptisms in my mission, which is a, a result of the, the hard work that I did, and I know that. Uh, going forward, if we keep working hard, if I keep working hard, that we'll be able to see uh, a lot of happiness in our lives. Uh, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hi, it's Elder Walker. I just wanted to share real quick something that I wish I did before I left my mission. And what that is, is I wish I read through the entire Book of Mormon all the way through. And not just that, but to really study it and ponder about it. And one thing that I've found to help out here on my mission, which I wish I could go back in time and tell myself to do, is to start my day off with at least two chapters in the Book of Mormon. No matter what chapters they are, but to just read them. And to put everything else aside, put my phone away, keep it a nice quiet and peaceful environment and to really really try to understand what the scriptures are meaning and how it applies to me and I want to give that counsel to you and I invite you to do that is to honestly and earnestly read and then to pray about it and to think about how it applies to you and how it can apply to others as well my name is Sister Elton, and I'm a service missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I serve in the Boise, Idaho service mission. As a missionary, there was some things I wish I knew or did differently the first time around. Since I'm a service missionary, I have a bit different circumstances. For one, I don't have a companion. There can be other service missionaries. They are really fun to hang out with. I also live at home and can participate in most family activities. I can also go to church activities for my age. 
Some things I wish I knew before I went on my service mission was that it would be tons of fun. I get to meet tons of new people every day and most of them are nice. Even though most of the people there are amazing, there will be really hard days. Some days you might feel like you don't get enough respect you need. Another thing of advice I would give is to be willing to do anything. You will find yourself being happier and have more love. Even if it's just a hug to someone you don't know, it can mean everything to that person. Some things I would do different about preparing for a mission would, to, would be to read Preach My Gospel more intently. By doing this, it will help you understand the Holy Ghost will be with you and everything will be okay. I wish I also prayed more understanding of why I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I also wish I went to the temple more often and rely more on the Spirit. Some things I absolutely love about being a service missionary is that I meet so many different cultures and personalities every day. I work for a nonprofit organization that requires many people coming in and I greet them. I also love that my P days are just like like the days before my mission with a few restrictions. I also got a missionary tag that I get to wear everywhere and it has the Lord's name on it. Some things that would be beneficial beneficial for the youth to help prepare is to have a good understanding of the Book of Mormon and Bible. Listen to the Holy Ghost and know what Heavenly Father has a plan for you and trust Him. Learn how to deal with criticism. Your family and really good friends are there for you. All in all, I love doing, doing, doing work for the Lord on a mission. The Lord has a plan for you, and if you think a mission is part of it, I would suggest putting your papers in and talk to the bishop. The Lord loves you, and Jesus loves you. Love, Sister Elton. Hey, I'm Sister Clayton. I haven't met all of you, but I'm serving in the Alabama-Birmingham mission right now, um, the ABM, or America's Best Mission. So for things I regret before my mission, I would say the only one is probably that I didn't write down anything when President Keel set me apart. I didn't write down any of the notes from the blessing, besides one or two, and I think that would be really cool to have, but um, I would say that's my only regret. Um, there's a lot of things that I don't regret. Um, I was able to take mission prep twice at Boise State and once at BYU-Idaho, and being able to study Chapter 3, Preach My Gospel, the lessons, and know kind of the content of them before you go into the MTC is super helpful. Um, another thing I don't regret is going to the temple often. Uh, when we're out here in the field, we don't get to go a lot. And so take advantage of it while you can. Go do baptisms while you can. And then once you're getting ready to go on your mission, work in the temple. That was the best thing ever. And just be in there as much as you can be because it will make you a lot stronger in your testimony. One thing I loved that I was able to do before I left on my mission was to read the Book of Mormon every day with a question in mind. And by doing that, I was able to practice receiving revelation. So if you read with a question and you just keep reading until that question's answered, or whether it's on the page or whether the Spirit tells you, it's really good to practice receiving revelation because you do that a lot as a missionary. And it's really necessary in your day-to-day -day life. And before I left, since I came to the Bible Belt, Bishop had me read Saints, and that has been a big blessing because I was able to learn more about church history. That way when preachers and people come at us, um, my testimony isn't shaken. And so I would definitely advise everybody to do that as well. And I hope you all serve missions. It is the best thing ever, and you will never regret it. And I'm loving every second. I don't have enough time left. And just really work on preparing yourself, because this is the best thing you'll ever do. I'm Elder Clayton, and I'm serving in the Mexico Pueblo South Mission. And I want to thank Bishop for the opportunity to make this video. Um, the first question is what I wish I would have known beforehand. And I wish I would have prepared more come on, spiritually. So I didn't have to spend the first few weeks of, of my mission in the dark. I, I, I kind of had to follow my trainer around like a, like a dog the first few weeks because first I didn't know Spanish, but second I, I didn't know the lessons. 
And really, we have all the opportunity to, to learn the lessons beforehand, to, to read them in chapter 3 of Preach My Gospel. And I wish I would have done that beforehand because really it's, uh, the, the training was, it wasn't a waste of time, but, but I didn't really know what was going on and I wish I would have been able to. Um, what I would have done differently to prepare is put myself in more missionary situations. I always thought it would have been super weird if I, if I would have asked to, to help the missionaries, but really it, it would have been an opportunity, a really good opportunity to, to see how, how the lessons go. Um, and I would have studied the Book of Mormon more to know the stories uh, and know where the scriptures are. Because now, was, after a few months in my mission, I, scriptures come to my head just like that. But I, at the start, I wish I would have been able to, to know those just right off the bat. Um, what I absolutely love about being a missionary is, is seeing how I can be an instrument in the Lord's hands. Um, through my obedience and, and through just pushing myself to be better every day, I'm just trying to make, my, make myself an, an even better instrument for the Lord to use. Um, I've seen, obviously, we tell, we tell people this all the time, that, that two missionaries are never going to convince you that, that the church is true. It's really going to be the Spirit. And, and we're really just the messengers to, to help bring you this message. But really, you're going to know through the Spirit. Um, and I love, I love being, being out here and being able to see the, the people embrace the gospel fully because it's, it's something that, that really sounds familiar to these people. Um, it's, it's crazy to, to think that, that someone who's never heard the gospel, is, like, that the gospel is going to sound familiar to them. But it's really true that, that people hear about, about eternal families. We tell people, your family can be together forever. You guys can really be, really be sealed in, in heaven and on earth for, for forever. And, and they really embrace it. And it's awesome to see that. Uh, I love the message of, of the plan of salvation. Um, anything else beneficial? Um, I, I recommend that, that you be able to, to leave everything at home. Uh, when you go on your mission, because you don't want to be a missionary that lives that lives for Peter. Um, at the start of my mission, I, I kind of struggled with that a little bit. Um, you should be able to to lose yourself completely in the work, so that you, that you don't have to worry about anything at home. Um, and I also suggest that you enjoy every moment, because I blinked and, and I hit six months. And in the course of preparing for this video, I hit seven months. So time passes super fast in in the mission, and, and you really gotta enjoy it while while you can. And also, you need to enjoy the, the time with your family and friends before your mission. It's super, it's, it was kind of like a movie for me, those weeks leading up to my mission. You really need to enjoy that when all the family comes to, to say goodbye to you and, and when, when you have the chance to give your, your farewell talk to, to the Tuscany Ward, you should really, really enjoy that moment and take it all in. Because it's, it's going to be better when you get home, but it's not going to be the same, obviously. Um, and the next thing is that, that you rely on the Lord. Always, when I got to the MTC and, and looked up at the bunk bed on that first night, I said, how can people do this for two years? But really learning to, to rely on the Lord um, showed me that, that I was never alone, that there were really more people surrounding me than, than there were ever before in my life. Um, it's, it's really a grand testimony that, of uh, being in the mission, that, that people are here to help me. The last thing is, is that, that we appreciate what our parents and, and leaders have done for us. Really in the Tuscany Wards, it's a... A missionary making machine. Um, I testify to that because because the leaders are, are all focused and, and helping us get out here and really um, appreciate what your parents do. I, I couldn't tell how much my parents were doing for me beforehand until I got here and, and really I'm able to appreciate now all the preparation that they, they helped give me, all those family home evenings, all those all those plus all those rules that they put in place for me. But really it's helped me become plus be able to be able to be out here on my mission. I love being a missionary. Go be a missionary if you can be. And I testify that the church is true. Peace out. Like, subscribe, and comment. <laughs> hey everybody, what's up? Melder Sayer here. Hey, I'm super excited to talk to you guys about, about the mission for a couple minutes. I could go on forever, but I'll keep it to a couple minutes. I want to talk about how, how good the mission is for the soul. And the first thing I want to say is the last word that I'd use to describe a mission is stressful. Before my mission, I always thought that, well, the mission would be like, you'd feel a lot of stress. You always be worried about doing things and like about tough situations and how to best help the people. And that is something that is tough sometimes. You have tough situations and sometimes you don't know what to do in, in certain of the situations. But I've never felt stressed and I always thought that that would be the case. Or I've never felt really anxiety. I always thought that would be the case. But 
out here on the mission, the best part is you can just put all your other worries behind. You're out here as a servant of the Lord, and that's your only mission. You can just come out here and put everything you got into being obedient and into always being focused on the work. And, well, when you're focused on the work, when you're doing the things you're supposed to do, the Lord's going to bless you. An insane amount. Uh, I've seen in my, in my mission a few times where we were doing service for 16 straight hours or something like that. Just a ton of time, a ton of service back home. And the word, if someone asked me to come help them move, I'd be like, ah, I'd go, but, you know, it's a pain. You don't want to have to go break the user or do service and you could be doing other things. But I'd always get really tired of it really fast. But I want to testify that out here in the mission, the Lord magnifies your efforts. And whenever there's hard things, uh, whenever you feel uncomfortable in a situation, whenever you just think you should be dead tired, the Lord will magnify your efforts and it will carry you on your shoulders. And I've seen that uh, be a huge blessing in my mission. Just got to do everything you can. And it's going to be the funnest, most stress-free, most inspiring, most testimony-building experience of your life. I know that some of us, when we leave our missions, we don't have the strongest testimony. And I didn't. Uh, I had a strong testimony, I felt like, and, um, and a lot of things. But not completely. And there were some things I was worried about having to testify about because I didn't have a super strong testimony in it. But I know that you can receive those answers and fortify your testimony here on the mission. And I found a true love for the Book of Mormon before my mission. I never really read it. Well, I read it, but like I didn't really enjoy it. I was just reading it to do it, and I learned from it and stuff like that. But out here on the mission, I've fell in love with the Book of Mormon. And I've learned to enjoy it and read it every day. And it's really hard to go without reading it any days. And I know that you'll fall in love with things like that on your mission and really truly fortify your testimony. The mission is so for so good for the soul. And well, I want to share these things with you guys in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You need to serve a mission, everybody. You need to do it. If you if you're telling if you're telling yourself no, that's Satan. Serve a mission. You learn so much. You become so much closer to God and Jesus Christ, and it'll be setting you up for your entire life to come. Love you guys. Stay strong. Hi guys, um, my name is Sister Tuller. I am getting ready to go to the Bentonville, Arkansas mission. I'm still in the MTC. I've only been here for a week, but I really like it. It kind of feels like EFY, if any of you guys have been there, but yeah. So I have two three hour classes every day. So I'm in class for like six hours, which it gets kind of long, but like it's fine. And I'm with my district all the time. Um, there's six girls and then five elders. So we're with them all the time. We go to class with them. We eat with them. We go to the gym with them. We play for four square at the gym all the time. So that's really fun. Um, let's go see if I'll show you my companion. Sister Lena, <laughs> come be in my video. This is for my whole entire ward to see. Dear heavens, <laughs> no pressure, hi. <huh? laughs> That's my companion. Her name's Sister Lena. She's super cool. And then there's two other sisters in my room. And then these two sisters are also in my Hello. district. And they're really cool. So it's been fun. <laughs> um, I think that's it. The food here is good. But yeah. Hey, everybody from Tuscany Ward. Um, it's Elder Mickelson the Younger over here in Las Vegas. Um, I guess I'll start with what, what I wish I would have done better. Um, a lot of a lot of a lot of people think that like you have to be a like a really good scripturian to be uh, to be a good missionary, and you really don't have to to be a, like a scripturian to be a missionary. You it's important to read the scriptures and to to learn all those things. But something that uh, I, I would uh, recommend learning to do before you get out on a mission or uh, experimenting, experimenting with a little bit before you come out on a mission is uh, learning how to feel the Spirit and how the Spirit talks to you and learning how to receive revelation. And when you do that, you can really figure out how um, you, can, um, you can help other people um, and you can listen to the Spirit and help, help other people uh, feel the Spirit too. So that's a big thing that I would recommend is just learn how to 
receive revelation and um, follow the Spirit. Um, but honestly, uh, these missions are, are a lot of fun. They're a lot of work. They're a lot of hard work. But um, I, I can see myself improving so much every single day out here. And um, I'm meeting different people that I will be friends with for the rest of my life. And um, I'm, I'm working on helping other people change their lives too. And it's a really cool experience to, to just be out here helping other people um, come to Christ and, uh, and see the joy that, that that can bring them. So if you're thinking about serving a mission, um, I would say really consider it. And um, I just know it'll bless your life and it'll bless the life of your, of your family as well. But yeah. I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hey y'all, uh, Bishop asked me to, to share some, some things about, about being a missionary and what I, what I thought of it before and what I th think of it now that I'm on a mission. Um, but I guess I'll start with, with something that I, th that I think is awesome for a mission. Um, I personally didn't want to serve a mission at first. That's not something I wanted to do. And... Luckily, we have an awesome bishop, and he, he talked me into it. And I'm so happy that he did, because there's nothing better in the world than, than sharing the gospel every day um, as my job. And people think it's kind of weird, especially down here in Texas, where everyone believes, believes in Christ. They just don't, a lot of people don't act on it. <laughs> but a lot of people think, it, think, think it's really awesome that, that we go around and we preach of Christ um, to everyone we, we see. But I think really one of the things that's the most awesome is seeing people change. Um, because you, even just being here for just over a month, a month and a half, I have seen so many people's lives be changed um, for the better. And it's awesome to see the, the power that, that Christ's atonement has on people. Um, and kind of going with that is, is something that's super hard, is seeing people who have changed their lives and 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 made those those awesome improvements in their lives um, turn away from it, um, especially when they get close to to something as big as baptism, due to small concerns or 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 just fears. And it's really hard to see people people turn away from that. It's really sad, and I didn't think it was going to be as sad as it is. Um, but these people, you you. You help them to this point, and then they they reject the things that they know and they feel, and you know that they know and they feel, and really that's that's one of the hardest things on a mission. It's not the talking to people every day, it's not the rejections that you get. In fact, the rejections sometimes are pretty hilarious. But I think the really one of the hardest parts is seeing the people that you've grown to love um, turn away from the things that you know um, that they have felt. But it's so worth it. I didn't think it was going to be worth it coming on a mission, but it is more than worth it. And if any of y'all are, are thinking about going, I, I seriously do think that y'all should go. This is a wonderful work, and I'm so lucky to be a missionary right now. And I can't, I can't wait to continue to, to serve the Lord. But love y'all, and please do serve. It's, it's the best. Um, so one thing that I wish I would have done to prepare me for my mission was read the Book of Mormon more and also attend the temple more because the temple is so close. I wish I would have taken advantage of that. Also, something that I think prepared me a lot for my mission was definitely taking a mission prep course um, at BYU-Idaho that helped me um, study the scriptures more and study, preach my gospel and get me familiar with all the principles. Um, and then something I've loved about my mission is having a companion um, that has become one of my good friends and, <laughs> and is someone that I get along super well with. She's awesome. Missionary work's awesome. Missionary work's awesome. Good luck on your missions. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, I'd like to... Well, I'd like to share my experience, I guess, about the mission so far. And, well... I think first I'm just going to start off with like before the mission, I was like, okay, so like millions of kids do this, right? So it's got to be like easy, like, right? Like a mission's got to be like easy, like so many people do it. Um, it's got to be like a cakewalk. 
Um, but the first day in the CCM, like, it's like a roundhouse kick to the neck. I was like, wow. Okay, so the mission's actually gonna be hard. So I actually gotta, I actually gotta do something about this. Like, I actually gotta like, like start now because like it's a little bit too late now, right? Um, so, so and and the thing is like, it's hard to explain how to prepare because, because before I thought I had a testimony, and then I get out in the field <laughs> and I realize I got two big problems. One. I don't got a testimony, and two, I can't speak Spanish for nothing. Like, so, but um, but always learning. I think the biggest thing to learn is to rely on the Lord, um, because you can't explain the testimony that you gain out here. Um, it's something different for sure. <laughs> um, it's kind of like, like on at home, like you can, you can get by with like a like a like a measurely testimony. You know what I mean? You like you can get by because it's just like. It's like you got all the people there with you, right? That are just sharing their testimony, and especially like Idaho, you got a lot of members, and they're just sharing their testimony. It's like, it's like, it's easy, you know. But then when you come out here, and it's like, it's like you're alone, you know. It's like, you know, it's really when when you get tested, like, like with your testimony. It's like, are you really willing to to work every day for this? Are you really work like, are you really like ready to like fight for Christ, you know? It's like, before it was like, okay, like I'm fighting for Christ, I'm going to seminary for an hour a day, you know what I mean? But now it's like, it's like you're really there. Like you're really like every second of the day, you're giving your life to Jesus Christ. Um, and um, and it's definitely been a life changer for me so far. Like I've only been out like seven months and, it's, and I feel like it's, it's, it's been changing my life. And um, so I recommend it to anybody who would who'd like to do it because um, I needed it for sure. Um, for sure. Um, well, thank you, and that's and that's some of the experiences that I would like to share. Um, and we'll see you guys later. Um, yeah. Hi there. Why do you want to serve a mission? Maybe it's a family custom. Maybe you want to go to an interesting place. Maybe put off college. Maybe you would love meeting new people. Great reasons. Well, some of them are great, but they're not the real reason. Because you love Jesus Christ and want to serve him with all of your heart, might, and mind. In the scriptures, it says, whether our service is to our fellow men or to God, it is the same. If we love him, we should keep his commandments and feed his sheep. As I serve as the nurse in the Idaho Boise Mission, we have about 180 missionaries that I'm in frequent contact with. I receive two, two to 18 phone calls a day about various medical issues. I served in this calling in California for five years, quite a while ago. And I do have advice for you. Um, a lot of advice that I have learned in my calling. As you're going through high school, you will learn a lot about um, scripture mastery. Please pray always. Pray always that you will have the spirit with you to divine the truth of the gospel. Please read the Preach My Gospel book many times before you turn 18. Prayerfully decide if you are really ready to go away from home. If your mom cooks, cleans, mends your clothes, makes your lunch, lays out your clothes, portions out your medicine every day, stop it. You need to do these things for yourself. And the habit takes up to a full year for you before you leave home. There's no one here in the mission who is going to do any of that for you. Do you feel ready to live with another person who might be cranky and depressed? Um, you may be the only one who has a bright attitude. So please pack it up and bring it with you on your mission. You are a gift. And when you serve your mission, your gift is going to be shared for someone who is waiting for you. The missionaries who are here now, or wherever they may be, are preparing people to meet you. So please be open-minded and love everyone you meet. Massive love and respect to you as you ponder and prepare yourselves to go and serve as Christ served.
everyone, I am Elder Colette from the Mission Chile Vini del Mar and I'm super excited for the opportunity to be able to talk with the youth from the Tuscany Ward about um, the things I wish I would have known or the things I wish I would have done before the mission so I could have better prepared. Um, first off, one of the things that I didn't really understand about being a missionary is that in my head uh, the mission was, was teaching all day and it, and it was baptizing converts and I was so excited for that. And really that, that is a huge part of what we do as a missionary, we teach and we baptize. But there's also a third part that's one of the most important parts, and that's to find. Encontrar, enseñar y bautizar. And I didn't really think much about the finding part, right? We, we do teach, but nothing happens in the mission work until we find someone to teach, like it says in Preach My Gospel. So a big part of our day as a missionary is walking around, talking with strangers, and trying to convince them to listen to our message about the restoration of the gospel. And I love that part. I love contacting people, but I didn't at first. It's something I really had to pray a lot to love because it's a little uncomfortable to walk up to strangers and to be able to share my testimony to people I've never met in my life. But really, that's grown to be one of my favorite parts about the mission, is testifying to people because everyone that we see on the street is a child of God. So the first thing I would recommend is to read the talk by President Uchtdorf, and it's called Missionary Work, Sharing What Is In Your Heart. And, bueno, Elder Uchtdorf. And that's from April of 2019, and that talk is amazing. It was one of my favorites from general conferences. I've been a missionary, and it's really helped us a lot. We've shared that with a lot of members to get them more excited. But basically what it says in that is that before the mission, the Lord doesn't expect that we're on the corner with a megaphone shouting about the Book of Mormon. But the Lord does expect that we're sharing what's in our heart, that we're sharing our testimony in a natural way. So as a pre-missionary, as a future elder, or future uh, hermana, sister missionary, I would invite you to share your testimony with your friends, with people maybe you don't even know, to find like simple natural ways to share your testimony because that's really going to bless you a lot and that's really going to prepare you to contact in the mission and find people to baptize. So that's a huge part of being a missionary. The second thing that is crucial that I would recommend is read the Book of Mormon every single day. I love the Book of Mormon with all my heart. I know that the Book of Mormon is the Word of God. I know that it's the most powerful tool that we have as missionaries in the conversion of other people. And it's been the most powerful tool in my own personal conversion to the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know for a fact, without a single doubt in my heart, that the church is true. And I know that Joseph Smith was a prophet and that Jesus is the Christ. And I know these things because I've read the Book of Mormon and I've pondered it in my heart and I've asked if it's true and, and God has told me that it is. The last thing that I wanted to talk about with, all, with you all is Preach My Gospel. Preach My Gospel is amazing. It's our most like, powerful tool as a missionary to be able to study and to learn about what we are going to be teaching other people. This book is like scripture. It was written by prophets and apostles to be able to help us as missionaries, as representatives of the Lord, to bring this gospel message to everyone. And I really know that this book is, is extremely important. A few chapters um, specifically that are really good to read is chapter 3. Yeah, chapter 3 has all of the missionary discussions that we teach the people that you're going to be teaching. It's super important that as missionaries, maybe we don't know all the deep doctrine. We don't know everything like that. I sure don't. But we need to know the basic doctrine that we teach, the doctrine you teach before baptism. And if you know that by heart, and if you really have a testimony that what you're teaching is true, your teaching is going to have a lot more impact on the people. So I, I would really invite you all to read chapter 3 of Preach My Gospel, and to study it, and to ponder it, and to ask if it's true. So you can, you can increase your testimony. And I would also invite you all to read chapter 6, How Can We Develop attribute, Christ-like Attributes. This is something that has not only changed my mission, but it's changed my life. And it really has helped me put myself in this, in this path to become a life, lifelong disciple of Jesus Christ and to develop the attributes that he has. The mission is it's two-sided. We're here to serve other people. The mission is about serving other people, about helping them to enter this, this covenant path to take upon Christ's name through baptism but it's also to help ourselves so that we can become lifelong disciples of Jesus Christ and develop attributes that are um, like the attributes that the Savior has. And I just wanted to testify to you all that the mission is, is the best thing I've ever done. I love the mission with every ounce of my being. I, I absolutely love being a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that the church is true. If any of you are thinking about whether or not you should serve a mission, I invite you to pray about it. I, I really know that the mission is an amazing opportunity and that so many people are out there waiting for you to bring this message of the restoration that will change their lives and help them live with their families forever. I love you all um, so much back in the Tuscany Ward. I wanted to thank Bishop Sayer for everything he did for me to help me uh, get out here on the mission as well. 
And I share all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Asombro me da el amor que me da Jesús. Confuso estoy por su gracia y por su luz. Y tiemblo al ver que por mí él su vida dio. Por mí tan indigno su sangre derramó. Cuán asombroso es que por amarme si muriera él por mí. Cuán asombroso es lo que dio por mí.